Good morning. Good morning. My name is my Lynn, name Horton. Lynn Horton. I am one of the deacons here at Central, here at Central Congregational, Congregational Church. Church. It's my joy to welcome you this morning, this morning whether you're whether here you're with here us in the sanctuary, the sanctuary or watching us on Facebook Live, Live or YouTube, or YouTube Live. Live. I'm glad, I'm glad this week, this week you don't have, you don't to, try have to, to try to read lips, lips on the live stream. Unfortunately, we had a technical issue with our audio last week. There was a mixer problem, which Vivian and Joe worked diligently to try to fix, but that was not their fault that that was a problem. So thank you for tuning in and having the faith to trust that you could both see us and hear us this week. Um, um, we're, we're inviting everybody, we're inviting everybody to come and join us downstairs for coffee, coffee hour after, after the service. The hosts, the hosts will be the middle school, school youth, youth group. group. That's, That's the Holy the Cows. Holy and thank, you, and to thank you to the Holy Cows also cows for setting up the Easter egg hunt for the younger children last week after the service. That was a lot of fun. The kids had a great time. A couple of announcements this morning. Of course, first of all, I want to welcome Shadow. And Shadow, and Shadow comes, comes with, with Reverend, Reverend Lee Atherton. Atherton. <laughs> and we're and grateful, we're to, grateful have to have Pastor Lee with us in this time. time. Thank you so much, so much Pastor, Pastor Lee. Lee. And thank you, and Shadow. Thank you, Shadow. <laughs> He's, become He's become quite, quite the, celebrity the celebrity here at CCC. Here at CCC. Um, there are a lot of announcements for the month of April in your bulletin. Please be sure to see all of them. And note especially that because of the eclipse tomorrow, we've learned that a lot of the people who like to come to the movie group Zoom will still be in travel mode. So we're moving the movie group Zoom from tomorrow to Tuesday at 7. So watch Singing in the Rain on your own and then come join us. If you need the Zoom link, talk to me and I'd be happy to have you join us to talk about a fun, uplifting movie. Thank you to everybody who donated clothes for the Cradles to Crayons drive that was organized by Lucas Hart. Lucas is going to announce next week how successful the overall drive was. So I can tell you that he was really great in getting that organized. And thank you, Lucas, and thank you to everybody who helped by donating clothes. Uh, let's see. I just want to jump to the most important stuff. This is a this really, is a important, really thing. important thing. Um, um, Bill, Harrison, Bill Harrison, who passed away, a member of our congregation for many years with his beloved wife, wife Mary. Mary. Bill, passed Bill passed away Thursday, Thursday morning, morning peacefully, peacefully in hospice, in hospice. And we will be having a celebration of his life this Friday. The family would like to receive visitors from 11 until noon here right in the front of the sanctuary. And then the service will begin at noon. And the reception that will follow will be in a country club in Lowell. So no collation here. But if you have any questions about that, see Pastor Lee or myself today. And prayers, of course, for the whole Harrison family. And as a joy, Pastor, Pastor Rich, Rich will be celebrating, will be celebrating a, birthday a birthday upcoming very soon, very soon on April 19th. 19th. So, if so if you've been thinking been that you want to send him a card, card and you and haven't you known quite what quite to say, what here's the perfect yeah, chance. Perfect chance. Send a, send a birthday card. You can either send it here to the church, or you can send it directly to him with the address that's in the church directory, and we'll make sure that he gets them by the 19th. So you have a little time, but think happy birthday thoughts for Pastor Rich on April 19th. And then Pastor Lee asked me to share with you that this is Holy Humor Sunday. Holy Humor Sunday was celebrated by the early Christians. It was their it's tradition their to share laughter, laughter and song, and song on, the on the Sunday after, after Easter. Easter. As, we, as continue we continue to celebrate the season of Easter, Easter let us let also celebrate, celebrate the time when God, when God played a played joke, a on, joke death on death by raising Jesus, Jesus from the cross. From the cross. Let us let share us the share joy in laughter. laughter. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our opening, Our opening hymn, hymn is Go Tell, Tell It on the Mountain, on the mountain number 167. 167. Please rise, rise in body, body and our and spirit. Our spirit.
may be seated. Good morning. Please join me in a call to worship found in your bulletin. In the face of culture of death, a world of killing fields, a world of walking dead, Christ is at the head of the resurrection parade, transforming our tears of betrayal into tears of joy, giving us dancing shoes for the resurrection party. And this glittering joker, who has danced in the dragon's jaws of death, now dances with a dance that is full of nothing less than the fullness of God. This is the dance of the new creation. This is the dance of a life out of death. And in this dance, all that was broken, all that was estranged, and all that alienated, all that was dislocated and disconnected, is You smiled and the sun burst through the shadows of chaos. You chuckled and the platypus splashed in creation's fountain. You laughed and all that is good and beautiful was given shape by you, imaginative God. <coughs> Excuse me. Snickering at the feeble attempts of the evil one, you showed us how to resist temptation giggling at sin's desperate desire to hold on to us, you release us by your love. Howling with laughter at death's foolish belief that the tomb could hold you, you burst forth into the kingdom as the stars peeled with joy, laughing Jesus. As you filled us with new life, may we delight in sharing it with others. As you tell us the good news which can never be taken from us, May we May rejoice we in offering, offering it to the broken, broken, broken the, sad, the sad, and the lonely. And the lonely. As you As tickle, tickle us with grace, grace. may we May give we it away with laughter on our lips and joy in our hearts, heart, spirit, spirit of Easter. Of Easter. God, God in community, community holy, holy in one, in one. Our, hearts our hearts overflow, overflow with wonder, with wonder and, and we give you thanks. thanks. Amen. Let us sing now a song for the humor of this day to the tune of For the Beauty of the Earth.
Let us now share Christ's peace with each other. And then you may be seated, sorry. <laughs> Small crowd this morning. Goodness, leave it. Leave it. Leave it. <laughs> he just loves Love your ears. ears. <laughs> <laughs> How are you all this morning? How are you all this morning? Oh, that's better. I'm glad to hear that you're good. I like all your stars and planets and everything. So I have a question. Do any of you play sports? Right. What sport? Sport, 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 sport? What do you play? What do you play? Baseball and soccer? What do you play? Swimming and what? And dance. Very cool. Dance and baseball. What do you do? Baseball. Soccer and taekwondo. Dance competition. And is your sport just lots of play? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, I was hoping my grandson would come today because his favorite sport. Maybe you can help me figure it out. Basketball. Basketball. That's, That's right. right. Can I have a grown-up grown help, help me out here? here. here. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so basketball, basketball. What do you have, do you have, to, have to, do? to do? Throw the ball in the hoop. That's right. 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 Maybe you can, maybe throw, you can it throw it after church. church. I'll bring it I'll down, bring down to the um, parish hall. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you can't, you can't really, really bring a basketball and hoop, hoop like a like real, real basketball, basketball and hoop to church, church right? That'd right? That'd be pretty hard. So I brought a little fun one. I think that if I don't throw the ball hard enough, what's going to happen? It's a baby one, that's right. It'll just fall down. And if I throw it really hard, it'll go way over there. That's right. I think I'm just going to hold on to it and not toss it. <laughs> Is that a good, that idea? A good idea? idea? No. no. Why, not? Why, not? Why not? I have to I have throw, throw it in the hoop. What if I miss? Then try again. Then try again. Then try again. Then try again. Just get the rebound, get the rebound and shoot down. again. I kind of like those. Well, maybe well, I maybe will give it a give try. It a try. Let's, see. Let's see. Oh, I love it. It's a moving hoop. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's kind of like the, the story that you're going to study in, in Sunday school this morning. In the Gospels. All set, yes. Thank you for your help. The story is about a guy who had lots of money, and he was going away on vacation. So he so bagged he up his up money, his and, money and, and handed it, handed it out to it some out people. people. And to one, to one person, person, he gave he five, five bags. bags. Imagine, Imagine that. that. And to, and another, to person, another person, he gave three, three bags, bags, of bags of money. And to another, and to another person, person, he gave one, one bag, bag of money. Bag of money. And, and the one that he gave five bags to, he invested it. And so when the traveling guy came back and said, where's all my money? He gave him 10 bags of money back. 
Gee, that, that, right? right? That was pretty that was awesome. Pretty awesome. And the one he the gave one he three gave bags, bags to, that guy that came bag, back bag, with, bag, with, bag, with, with bags. bags. He had doubled, he doubled, it. doubled it. But, but one, of one, them, one of them, the one who had one, one bag, bag, he hid he it, hid it. kind of like I wanted to do with the basketball. He decided not to do anything with it. He didn't want to risk losing it. And so the guy who had all the money and went on vacation, he wasn't very happy with him at all. Because he, he didn't try to do, didn't anything, try to do with anything with what he had been, had given. been given. given. And, and it's a and parable. It's a parable. And, and a parable, parable Jesus, Jesus always, has always has something else something he's else trying, trying to teach us. To teach us. And, in and in this parable, parable he's trying he's to trying teach us that, that we should we take, take our, our talents, talents, which is what it's called in the Bible, and use them. Like you use dance and taekwondo and playing and... Baseball, baseball and soccer, and, soccer. and, you, go and you go out there and you do it and you get better. That's what that's Jesus, what Jesus wants, wants us to do with the gifts that, that we've been given, given. the talents that we've been given. given. Not just, not just hide, hide the basketball, basketball away, 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 away and hope that we can just not, not mix it all up and mess it all up. So when you are worried about whether you should do something or not, whether you should not take a risk, go for it. That's what That's Jesus what says, because when you go for it, you do better things. Sound like a plan? Yeah? yeah. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, help us not to be afraid and to take the gifts that you've given us and do our best with them, even if sometimes it seems scary and we're going to miss the hoop. Remind us that we can do all things through you who strengthens us and leads us and shows us the way. Thank you, God. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Amen. All right. Go ahead and go to Sunday school and have fun. This often. Good morning. There we go. Uh, to dovetail on Pastor Lee's sports analogies, we're in the ninth inning. We're in the fourth quarter. We're in the third period. We're at the end of the game. I am here, Sherman Horton, representing stewardship. If you hadn't read your bulletin. Um, stewardship is where every spring we ask the congregation to please pledge their support for the church for the upcoming fiscal year. We send out letters, we send out pledge cards. We ask you to fill in the card and um, give us your commitment to pledge your financial support again for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. At this point in the campaign, uh, we took a little break because of the Holy Week and Easter. Um, we've received a good number of pledges, but we haven't knocked off everybody on the list. What tends to happen at this point in the campaign is we will start making phone calls to folks. One of the things that we don't do on these pledge cards is give you a checkbox that says, I'm not pledging this year. And we do that on purpose because we don't want you to check that box. Um, but if you are not pledging this year, and we appreciate that might be a category of, of folks that are uh, gonna be um, responding, please let us know or we're gonna call you and you can let us know at that point. Uh, but there's a few other categories of folks. There might be folks who have already pledged and to them we say thank you very, very much. Um, when Dick, our treasurer, comes back, he will be preparing a budget and the budget will then uh, overlay a, against what, what pledge income we believe we're going to be seeing next year. And if there's a big gap, we will be back here talking to you to please help us uh, reduce that gap. If you haven't pledged in the past and you have no idea what I'm talking about, please see me or refer to the documentation, the stuff we've put in the bulletins and the, and the emails, and 
go to our website in the pink insert in your bulletins today. There's a, a block about stewardship and there's a website there. You can go to, you can pledge online. If you've already pledged and you want to pledge again, feel free. You can, you can do it as many times as you want. We don't have any limit on that. Um, there's another category of folks that we might, we, we want to reach out to and that's people who donate frequently. They, they come to church frequently, they're involved actively, and they do donate uh, quite a bit, but they don't pledge that donation. It's important to understand that in order for the church to budget properly for the year, we need to have some level of commitment or un knowledge, foreknowledge, of what's going to be coming in in terms of income. So please consider pledging. It's still great to donate as much as you can, of course, but pledging is very helpful. Again, in the next few weeks, we're gonna be doing the budget and we'll have more information about how that's looking. And then for the annual meeting, we're gonna to wanna to have that in place so that we can be prepared for the upcoming year. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. I carry with me all the time a whole stack of pledge cards. So if anybody wants to, uh, they can pledge at any time just by reaching out and seeing me. And again, any questions, let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shadow. <laughs>
who passed away on March 26th, Jane McKenzie, Deb's sister Betsy, Pat's brother Ken, Dick's sister Lynn in Ohio, she's recovering well from open heart surgery, Christopher Roy, Kit and Jenna, Mary Horn, and Joe Nagee, who recently had a heart attack. Please keep all these folks in your prayers and any others that um, you have on your heart. Know that God hears all our prayers, even when we don't give voice to them. Join me in prayer. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts of holy humor today. For the moments of laughter and unbridled joy you give to us, for opportunities to laugh at ourselves, for the belly laughs of children, for friends and family who love us because of our quirks and not just in spite of them, for artists who give us the opportunity to see the world through the surreal, for the courage to smile even when difficulties arise, for those who have hope even when others think there is no hope, for saints in the Lord who overflow with laughter and spread your joy to all of us, for the words of Jesus that defy our logical minds, for teaching us that we can be born again, for the woman who finds a lost coin and calls her friends and neighbors to celebrate, for the absurdity of a camel trying to fit through the eye of a needle, for the father of the prodigal son who is willing to look like a fool as he runs to greet his son, for the generosity of the landowner who will pay workers a whole day's wage when they only worked one hour, for tiny bits of faith that can move entire mountains, for the reality that nothing can live unless it first dies, for the great reversal of the gospel, that the last shall be made first, that the rejected stone became the cornerstone, that those who wish to become great must serve, that the lost will be found, that the small will become great, that though you are wisdom, you choose to forget our sins, and that when we are weak, your strength shines through us. O oh Lord, giver of joy and laughter, we thank you for giving us these gifts. We thank you for the gift you give us that allows us to enjoy everything to the full. We can laugh because of the most amazing gift of all, that you conquered death, that the tomb is empty, that the light shone so bright that it overcame the darkness. And so, O oh God, hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught us. Dear Creator, always near to us, may your name be treasured and loved. May your rule be completed in us. May your will be done here on earth in just the way it is done in heaven. Give us today the things we need today and forgive us our sins and impositions on you as we are forgiving all who in any way offend us. Please don't put us through trials, but deliver us from everything bad. Because you are the one in charge and you have all the power and the glory too is all yours forever, which is just the way we want it. Amen. So with that version of the Lord's Prayer, I'm preparing you for next week when the message will be about the Lord's Prayer. And now you're starting to get a little hint that you never know what's going to come from Pastor Lee. So be sure to come and enjoy what's up next. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John in chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace 
be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. And now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with them that day when Jesus came. And so later the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I don't believe you. A week later, Jesus' disciples were in the house again, and this time Thomas was with them. And though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said again, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it in my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord, my God. And then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Here ends God's holy word. Would you join me in a moment of prayer? God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts today be acceptable to you. You who are our rock, our redeemer, our conqueror in death, and our joy in celebration. Amen. Easter is a time of surprise. While worship has always been in a state of tension between our understanding of piety and the joy that fills the heart hearing the good news today, to laugh or not to laugh becomes the question. To restate Shakespeare, whether it is nobler in the mind to control the impulse and maintain decorum, or to give in and enjoy this day is totally up to you. The church that I was secretary in, that I worked at, before I heard my call to ordained ministry, had a rather large debate. And as I look back on it, I say, seriously, this is what we argued about? But it came up at church council for several months in a row. Is it okay to clap in worship? There was a lady who on the Sunday afternoon, before she was doing some baking for her Easter dinner the next day, heard a knock on her door. And she went to find a man dressed in shabby clothes and looking for some odd jobs. He asked her if there was anything he could do for her, and she said, can you paint? He said, well, yes, I'm a rather good painter, ma'am. And she said, well, great. There are two gallons of green paint over there and a brush. And there's a porch out back that needs to be painted. Please do a good job and I'll pay you what the job is worth. He said, that's great. I'll be done quickly. And she went back to her baking and didn't think much more about it until there was a knock at the door again. She went, and it was obvious obvious that he had been painting, for he had green paint on his clothes. And she said, well, did you finish the job? I sure did, ma'am. But did you do a good job? Yes, but lady, there's one thing I want to point out to you. That's not a Porsche back there. That's a Mercedes. (laughs) Easter is a time full of surprises. 
And this second Sunday of Easter builds on the good news that we celebrated last Sunday. Jesus was dead, but now he's alive. The women came to the tomb in despair, and they left the tomb in delight. Quite a story. Lots of questions. But as we learned last week, the bottom line, what this season is all about is that Christ is risen. And your response? He is risen indeed. Holy Humor Sunday continues in that celebration. It celebrates the fact that the resurrection of Jesus is God's ultimate joke on evil and death. It's a testament to the God who, as the psalmist says, sits in the heavens and laughs at the foolishness of humanity and any forces that might seek to thwart the divine purpose. In churches all around the world, the Easter season is celebrated in new ways. There's the Bavarian practice that has the faithful gathering in the back of the church on Easter afternoon for a time of storytelling and practical joking. There's the early Orthodox tradition in the Easter Monday gatherings for stories and jokes and anecdotes. And in Slavic regions, Christians gather the day after Easter for folk dancing and feasting in the churchyard. This Monday is known as Bright Monday, White Monday, Dingus Day, and Emmaus Day. Latin speakers call it Rhesus Pecalis, God's joke. Today, you and I are calling it Holy Humor Sunday, a time to laugh. But as wonderful as last Sunday made us feel, especially after all the good food that you might have shared, the wonderful Sunday school Easter egg hunt, the fabulous worship and music, and the fellowship, Monday dawned, and life was no longer Easter eggs and chocolates. The world intruded again. News of Israel and Hamas and stories from people in Gaza saying things like, I lost my whole family. Or, I've seen amounts of destruction that I can't even begin to explain. And then when the news is too much, we change the channel only to hear of more political divide right here in the U.S. We change the channel again. News of another mass shooting or another devastating flood or wildfire or tornado that wipes out whole towns and cities. Forget about changing the channel. We turn the news off altogether so that we can think about the joys of family and to spend quality time with each other. Right? But today, families need two vehicles three babysitters always ready and on call, good luck, at least three calendars to keep life organized, and an appointment secretary just to say hi to one another. Does this feel familiar to anyone? <laughs> All of this following some of the best news that we will ever hear. News that Christ is risen. The lectionary offers us, on this Sunday, the same gospel lesson year after year after year. Every Sunday after Easter, the same reading. It's one of the incredibly rare times on the calendar of the liturgical year that you find, no matter what year it is, A, B, or C, it's the same reading on this Sunday. The disciples... At least most of them are in a locked room. Plastic film, duct tape, dead bolts, locks, whatever it took. Scared to death that the same fate that took their master on Calvary might be awaiting them as well. Sure, they had heard the story of the women about the empty tomb. But at this point, that's all they knew. A story. But suddenly, Jesus is there with them through the plastic and duct tape, saying, Shalom. Our scripture translates that as, Peace be with you. More strictly translated, though, Jesus' peace be with you meant a whole lot more than our idea of peace today. 
When the risen Christ said those words, it was more than just a greeting, more than just an announcement. Peace be with you is a pronouncement of well-being, of wholeness, of completeness, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So let me ask you a simple question. Where do you need peace in your life right now? All of us, I'm sure, can attest to the fact that at times, life seems pretty unmanageable. We live in a broken world. People's lives are daily being torn apart and challenged. And often, when there's no faith to bring the person through whatever trial they're facing, everything seems to fall apart. I wonder what those people do. But for those of us who know why Jesus died, frankly, to fix broken people and broken situations, we know that Jesus wants to bring peace in our greatest storms. The gospel song says it all when we sing, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. We encountered doubting Thomas for the third time in today's reading. When Jesus showed up on the scene and proclaimed, Peace be with you, it was that encounter with the risen Lord that empowered Thomas and the rest to publicly and powerfully proclaim the good news, the news that over time would turn the world upside down. With eyes that were no doubt as big as saucers, Thomas doesn't even bother to check before he responds, my Lord and my God. And when Jesus said, peace be with you, he was giving Thomas, the disciples, and even us, the hope we so desperately need in our continuing journey with the living Christ. Hope that because he lives, we too live. Hope in the future that people events, circumstances, cannot change. Hope that says we don't have to live in our past, struggle in our presence, or fear our future. It's a hope that says this Easter, when Jesus told us, peace be with you, it will make a difference. Life will not be the same. Like Thomas, May it mark our lives with a purpose and meaning and a new direction. It was a couple weeks after the resurrection when someone approached Joseph of Arimathea, articulating their surprise at allowing Jesus to be buried in Joseph's newly hand-hewn stone tomb. Joseph simply shrugged his shoulders and said, he only needed it for the weekend. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Easter is a time full of surprises, an empty tomb, a doubter's fears, and unbelief changed, a Savior announcing that his peace will be with us. May the peace of Christ be with you always and everywhere. Amen. I love this vision of the community of the early church. Those with the most resources used them to help make sure that no one was in need. Everyone fed, everyone clothed, everyone cared for. It's a model that we would do well to mirror because then we are clearly living the way of Jesus. So let us now offer our gifts following the example of the early Christians.
thank you, God, for the joy you have given us, which bubbles over into laughter and fun. Thank you for renewing our joy. We pray that you will use these, our gifts, to bring joy to all the world. We pray in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. We are here this morning because Jesus has called us, strangers and friends, locals and visitors, believers and doubters, the certain and the curious. It is always a mixed company that Jesus gathers and invites to his table, where in bread and wine he meets us. So come, not because of how you feel, but because God has food for you. Come not because you deserve a place, but because Jesus invites you, just as you are. Let us join in singing, Draw Us in the Spirit's Tether, number 392. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God. You created all things, from the cleverness of the fox to the swiftness of a river from the queerness of the clownfish to the playfulness of a puppy, from the puzzle-solving intelligence of the octopus to the noble height of a sequoia. No one could look at a platypus and not see your sense of humor, creative God. And you created us too, each bearing your image, but also unique in our own ways. You loved us with that very first breath of life, and even when we turn away, still, your love remains steadfast. You worked through teachers and tricksters, through prophets and priests, schemers and scholars, fools and pharaohs, 
all a part of this mischievous story of your tenacious love for us, your creation. And so with all your creatures, great and small, on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their un un unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of joy and creativity, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and mischievous too, for who would have guessed that the creator of the universe would take on human flesh to come and live among us in Jesus the Christ? Jesus, master storyteller that he was, kept explaining again and again that the wisdom and justice of God are not what we humans kept, keep imagining. Jesus kept inviting folks to stretch their imaginations. He modeled how to color outside the lines of human institutions with God's love. And he painted a vivid imagery of God's kingdom that turns power upside down and inside out. And teaching the disciples like children, Jesus loved a good object lesson. So even on that last night of his human life, he tried one last time to engage the disciples' imaginations. And he took what he had, a loaf of bread, and he invited them to see not just a loaf of bread, but to see, to imagine his body. And Jesus instructed them that when they ate this bread, they should remember, retell, reconstruct the meaning of his life and love and share that experience in community. And then he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and invited his disciples to keep imagining, keep leaning into the mystery of our faith, that in this cup we taste not only grapes, but we taste salvation. We taste forgiveness. We taste a joy that outlasts and outlaughs even death itself. And so we remember that on the night of that last supper with his disciples, he broke the bread and he poured the cup. We remember the mystery we encounter at this table, the mystery of God's good grace. We remember that God flipped the script yet again, declaring that this is precisely in the breaking of bread that we are made whole. And so we remember we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that nourished by this meal, we can go out and be the body of Christ in this whole world boldly proclaiming God's joy. Amen. And so together we share with you the body of Christ.
take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. of new life poured out for you. Let us join in the prayer of thanksgiving printed in your bulletin. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people, through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing Lord of the Dance, printed in your bulletin, and feel free to dance as you wish.
And now may the Creator give you eyes to see the new creation springing forth. May Christ give you ears to hear the laughter of new life. May the Spirit set the feet of your heart dancing to the rhythm of resurrection. Go now in the love and the grace of God. Amen.